Welcome back to Ben's Episto channel. Uh, currently, I am trying to create a uh, antimicrobial and low pH area inside of this little cichlid cave right here. I uh, would probably work on a pot, a uh, broken pot or a regular pot or whatever. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this method. Uh, a little bit of a backstory on this method. Uh, by the way, this is my first time trying it, so uh, I guess we'll see what happens with this exp experimentation. A uh, little bit of backstory was uh, Mike Wise, uh, who uh, posts on epistogramma.com a lot, was staying over at Ted Judy's place uh, over in Wisconsin, who's, uh, I guess, pretty famous in the epistogramma community as a retailer and a uh, wealth of knowledge about uh, epistogramma and a lot of other fish. Uh, anyway, so Mike was staying over at Ted's place, and uh, he was checking out his fish room, uh, and uh, he was talking to Ted about some fish that he couldn't breed, uh, and uh, Ted said that one of his tricks was to have a little bit of a breeding cave, kind of like this, and to add a little bit of sphagnum moss. So I've got sphagnum moss right here, uh, and what you want to do is just add a little bit of sphagnum moss to the cichlid cave. It's pretty easy. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about why you want to do that. Uh, I guess uh, this is something that's kind of new to me. So with Epistogramma, a lot of uh, dwarf cichlids, you're wanting to achieve a low pH. So that's why we have things like uh, shrimp soil. I went a little bit overboard and I added shrimp soil, which is supposed to bring it down to about 6.5. Uh, it's made out of peat. Uh, I've added some leaf litter over here and uh, I add a little bit of black water extract. I just did a video about DIY uh, black water extract so go ahead and watch that. Anyway so what you want to do is uh, keep a low pH uh, about 6.5. Some of the uh, dwarf cichlids prefer a much lower pH than that. Some can uh, um, survive in a little bit higher pH than that. They can pretty much all survive in a little bit higher pH, but they don't prefer to. Uh, they prefer uh, lower pH because uh, they come from the South America region. So anyways, um, what I'm trying to do is make a much lower pH area just in this little pot right here. So I'm using sphagnum moss, which lowers pH pretty well. And I'm going to use a couple pinches of that stuff it right in there and lower it in my aquarium. Uh, sphagnum moss and uh, of a couple different types is a uh, antimicrobial and what it'll do is if your fish end up laying eggs in uh, your prepared structure uh, it will aid in the fish not getting fungus or the uh, the eggs not getting fungus and will aid with the amount of uh, hatched eggs that you will get or if you weren't going to get any because your water's too hard or you've got too high of a pH uh, it will hatch within here because it's got a much lower pH so that's the idea of uh, what we're going to do here so I've got some peat moss falling all over the place over here I'm being stupid but I'm doing this with one hand so I'm going to move this over on top of my 10 gallon aquarium so this doesn't fall right inside my 15 gallon aquarium and I'm going to stuff a little bit of it right in here. Uh, this is just a little pinch right here. Uh, it was just uh, about a golf ball size uh, loose pinch of it and I'm just going to stuff it right in here. I know this is going to expand so I don't want to add too much of it in there. I don't know if we can get a shot of how much of it is in there but uh, it's not a whole lot. Uh, so that's basically but what Mike Wise and Ted Judy were talking about is just don't use a whole lot. You obviously don't want to stuff the whole uh, cave or whatever you're going to use with uh, peat moss and they won't be able to lay eggs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look out for fish over here, try not to kill my fish, uh, put my cichlid cave in here. Uh, replace the piece of wood that I had over it. They seem to prefer to have it kind of hidden. And there we go. Uh, proof of concept hopefully will be coming up soon. Uh, hopefully I put just enough in there, didn't put too much. I'm going to check in a couple days, see how that's going, and then I'm going to leave it alone and hopefully it ends up working. Uh, sphagnum moss will last for a couple months in your aquarium. 
uh, probably about a month and a half, two months, uh, has been my experience with it. It's kind of a pain in the ass uh, if you're using uh, just a regular pump style uh, vacuum um, hose to take water out of your aquarium. Probably would be fine on a python, but it kind of gets stuck within the uh, vacuum hose uh, at the top of it and kind of gets clogged. So putting it right on the bottom of your aquarium really hasn't worked out for me. So I've kept a lot of this bag of uh, sphagnum moss. I've been using it uh, to plant recently. So anyways, a little bit of a fish update, a little bit of a DIY here. The fish are all doing pretty well. I had to hang my light a little bit above my aquarium right here to kind of show you guys uh, what was going on with the cichlid cave and the new kind of experience uh, I'm doing over there, a little DIY. Uh, the McMaster Eye are doing pretty well. I've been feeding them black worms recently. The local fish shop just recently got uh, black worms in again. So that's good. Uh, about to add some of my DIY <clears throat> black water additive uh, to these tanks the next time I do a, uh, a water change. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to lowering the pH even more in my aquarium. Uh, right now it's sitting at about 6.8-ish, maybe 7. Uh, it depends. Uh, I guess plants kind of change the pH in your aquarium a little bit, and the pH will swing a little bit during the day. Uh, so I've been kind of going for about uh, lowering my pH about 0.2-ish per week. I've been having to put some locally sourced water in my aquariums, which has really sucked because the pH is pretty high. Uh, I got my RO water at the store, and I just wasn't able to make it to the store the night that I had uh, kind of an emergency on my tanks. I had a little bit of a nitrate problem. Uh, I was probably sitting at about uh, 40 or 60 parts per million, which, you know, whatever. Uh, but I changed some aquarium water and it raised the pH a little bit. So I'm working on lowering the pH right now. So anyways, a little bit of DIY action for you guys. A little bit of video. So thank you for watching. Thank you for all my subscribers for subscribing. That's awesome. I think I'm up to 86 or 88 subscribers right now, which is great. I haven't been doing this YouTube thing for a very long time. Uh, I've made a decent amount of videos. So go ahead and check out those videos too. Uh, I've got a lot of videos on how to keep a pistogramma and a lot of different aspects of doing that. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope your fish are doing well. Hope your family's doing well. Hope you're doing well. Peace out.